Hello, my name's Andrew, and for the past two weeks, I've been working on a color e-ink tablet called the Books Tab Ultra C. I feel more relaxed and productive, but my iPad does a lot of things that Tab Ultra C can't, and I don't know if I can live without it. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna make a decision. One of these tablets is going on my desk, and the other is going on eBay. Two years ago, I ditched my iPhone for a minimalist phone called the Light Phone 2. And it works so well that I ended up replacing my iMac with an e-ink display called the Books Mira Pro. And while it was a little awkward at first, the limitations of e-ink were a small price to pay for the 10 years of eye strain, headaches, burnout, and social media addiction that literally vanished within two weeks of switching. However, I still needed my iPad for color related things, and predictably, LED just started creeping back into my life. So I retaliated with a hardcore routine of screen time limits, deleting apps, and even putting my iPad in a locked safe. But whenever I logged back in, it was like modern apps load so much content so quickly that I would be tapping and scrolling on things before the decision-making part of my brain even kicked in. And the LED screen was so bright and vibrant that it made real life feel dull and depressing. Basically, I was a gambling addict living with a portable slot machine. And despite all the progress I had made with my light phone and e-ink monitor, my iPad was always there to drag me back down. For the past three months, I've been working on a project called Van Plan, but I was struggling so much with distraction that it came to a point where I realized that unless I got rid of my iPad, I was never gonna finish the video, let alone accomplish my dream of getting into van life. So like I did with my iPhone and iMac, I gave my iPad to a friend and paid $600 for a color e-ink tablet called the Books Tab Ultra C. When I powered it on, my first impression was kind of worse than I hoped, but better than I expected, because although the RGB filter made the screen look darker and more muted than my grayscale e-ink display, there's just this sense of magic seeing color on an e-ink screen. Like those moving paintings from Harry Potter. Right out of the box, I was able to log into Google Play and download apps like YouTube, Gmail, and Notion. And other than turning the speed to ultra fast and adding a custom full refresh gesture, the Books Tab Ultra C didn't need any special setup. Like all e-ink devices, you could see a little ghosting, but it really wasn't noticeable most of the time, and scrolling seemed smooth, although it got a little choppy in HD mode. Also, the stylus felt very Apple Pencil-like. And overall, I was very optimistic about replacing my iPad with the Books Tab Ultra C. That is, until I actually started trying to, you know, use it. <laughs> Scrolling websites, the choppiness of the tab ultra became more apparent, but it was also kind of nice because it gave me space to stop and think about what I was doing. Unlike the frictionless experience of my iPad. After years of social media addiction, it felt amazing just to be able to scroll a few posts without getting distracted. And seeing everything in muted colors made the glamorous lives of influencers a lot less interesting. Also, the tab ultra C worked well for doing basic research. And the color e-ink even made it possible to shop for clothes and barefoot shoes. Although I had to double check things on my MacBook before purchasing. Obviously the Tab Ultra was nice for reading, but I preferred the smaller size and higher contrast of my grayscale Kindle Paperwhite. And while simple comics like Calvin and Hobbes were great, the muted screen took away somewhat from color-rich graphic novels like Tokyo Ghost. Watching videos on YouTube was the same story because the quality was decent enough to look up a recipe, but let's be real, it's not like anyone wants to sit through The Lord of the Rings at 8 frames per second. Generally though, the book's Tab Ultra C was super relaxing for casual use and with my old MacBook as a backup, I proceeded to answer the more difficult question of would a color e-ink tablet actually work for work? Being a content creator, I use my iPad for literally everything, so trying to manage my productivity with the Books Tab Ultra C was a bit like trying to replace a rocket ship with a hang glider. For simple tasks like organizing my daily routine and notion, the stylus and pastel colors made for a perfect minimalist workflow. And I was even able to convert it to a DIY laptop by pairing a mouse and keyboard, which created a kind of lo-fi typewriter setup that I could use outdoors where the e-ink screen looked fantastic compared to the glare on my iPad. When it came to sketching, the Books Notes app had virtually zero lag, and the matte screen felt a lot more natural than my glossy iPad. That said, the app did get a little glitchy drawing 
design over image layers, and brushes and colors were limited. So for illustrating, I ended up using an app called Sketchbook, which was a lot more advanced. Although I did have to draw slower to compensate for a bit of lag and use my shortcut occasionally to clear the ghosting. So check this out. Here's a comic I illustrated in Procreate on my iPad. And here is the same exact comic that I illustrated in e-ink on the Books tab Ultra C in Sketchdesk. Not bad, right? But the other cool thing is that while I was detaxing from my iPad, I also came up with this cardboard illustration style. And that's kind of the cool thing about e-ink because it's almost anti-addictive, you know? Always pushing you back towards the real world. For short video chats, the Tab Ultra was a nice break from LED, but unfortunately it just felt too choppy to use on longer video calls. And despite my dreams of video editing on e-ink, the colors just weren't accurate enough. Still, the e-ink screen worked fine for general productivity tasks like reading, emails, setting calendar events, and checking my bank account. Also, while the camera is mediocre, it worked fine for capturing documents, which I could edit with the Adobe Acrobat app using features like highlighting, annotating, sharing, and more. Also, the battery life on e-ink devices is insane. Like, I haven't charged the Tab Ultra for two weeks, and it's still at 36%. Overall, I never expected a minimalist tablet like the Books Tab Ultra C to do everything my iPad could, but I just feel so much more calm, creative, and focused working on e-ink that it's worth some inconvenience. For starters, my social media time is down from two hours to 10 minutes, and without blue light, my sleep improved from a 6.7 to a solid 8.2. But I was also able to illustrate all the animations for this video of zero eye strain. And in general, it's so nice to be able to slow down and appreciate things one at a time. However, the Tab Ultra Ultra's slow refresh rate makes it less useful for video, the measly 4 gigabytes of RAM can cause some apps to lag, and the color e-ink screen isn't accurate enough to give up LED completely. In terms of other e-ink devices, the Bux Palma has a 6.13 inch grayscale e-ink screen and it's small enough to use as a full featured alternative to the light phone. The Kindle Paperwhite has a 6.8 inch grayscale e-ink screen and it's super convenient for downloading and reading ebooks, and the Bux Mirror Pro has a 25.3 inch grayscale e-ink screen and works perfectly as a main or secondary monitor for productivity. If you'd like to support the channel, you can shop with the referral links down below or check out my reviews for the Light Phone 2 and the Books Mirror Pro. And if you have a question about the Books Tab Ultra C or about e-ink in general, let me know in the comments. Finally, at the time of posting this video, you can literally buy my iPad Air on eBay, but I'd recommend that you bought an e-ink tablet instead. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Peace.